I'll throw this out to you because of your Bay Area knowledge. I had the Raiders at seven and 10, and there was, there was two sticking points for me. One, I think they have, for the last three years, reached in the draft. I don't think they're very good at it. Secondly, I think their offensive line now is becoming more dependent on Richie Incognito in his late 30s. Trent Brown is gone. Gabe Jackson's gone. And the other thing is, I think it's not a line of bullshit, but I think I think Gruden's kind of highly energized, highly optimistic worldview. I think some players are going to start turning him out, tuning him out. Where do you see the Raiders this year? Yeah, I, I think the AFC is loaded, first and foremost. You know, it took 11 wins to get in the playoffs last year. The Raiders, who actually at one point in time, I think were six and three, and it looked like they had a chance. They missed the playoffs last year by three games. Three. That's a large margin. And they have the Chiefs in their division, which they actually play pretty well. But I mean, the Chiefs are way better. And then if the Chargers coach is just solid, there's yeah. more talent there. Yeah. I also think, like you said, they could take a little bit of step back on offense because their offensive line and their defense, they're drafting, they're. Mike Mayock, we followed his career for a decade plus or whatever on NFL Network. Right. And he always had these, he had Khalil Mack over Clowney. It was like always like he, football guys swore by him. Yeah. And he gets with Gruden and now he's taken, if he would have had in his ranking, some of the guys he took, it would have been the biggest story for you guys like me and you in March, right? We'd have been talking about what? This doesn't make any sense. He has this player and then it, it's Gruden. I mean, that's what happens when you give a guy a hundred million dollars. He's a terrible personnel guy. I think it's proven he's pretty good on offense. He knows yeah. nothing about defense. He took a decade away. His handpicked guy he had to fire midseason last year. He brings in Gus Bradley. So now they're pivoting on players that they already had invested in the last several years who weren't that good anyway, but you've invested high picks in these guys. So they're kind of spinning in neutral when the AFC Cleveland got their act together. Now Baltimore's a powerhouse. The chargers might have a star quarterback, the Colts are rolling, right? The, the AFC East could be really good. The bills are good. The dolphins are good. If the Patriots just kind of get solid, it's just going to be very, very difficult for them. And they do. The, the crazy part is if we like, well, they just haven't figured out the quarterback. Their quarterback has actually been pretty solid. Yeah, right? Derek's they, fine. You know, who who can't, when you have a solid quarterback, if your coach is making $10 million, you should be, if they miss the playoffs, you're four. Miss, I mean, that's pretty nuts, Colin. It's been, you nailed it's it. Been, I mean, you said you don't take that long away and come back in an industry like this. And it clearly yeah, it's, can't I mean, be done. I mean, the two industries that we talk about a lot, technology and the NFL, I think they're really hard industries to leave and then for 10 years and come back. They're very fluid, fast changing, often pivoting industries. And, you know, something else about Gruden and I like John, but, you know, Chris Ballard, I'm a friend of Chris Ballard and Tom Telesco, the Chargers GM and the Colts GM, and they both have the same personality. They're, they're stoic. They're very bottom line. They're not emotional. I think when you get into personnel, John, and you're a former NFL scout, you really, there is value in not being highly emotional. You cannot fall in love with players. You can fall in love with traits. You can't fall in love with players. John falls in love with players. Well, and then falls out of love, right? Really fast. And I think that the way you describe those two guys, and I know Andy has Veach now, uh, the, but Andy's a lot like that too. And I think Veach has kind of taken on that personality with the chiefs. They are, you know, if the guy's not working out, they'll pivot, but they don't get tied to a guy that they have to have. They can move or Gruden. I have to have this guy. Well, John, instead of taking him at 17, you can get this guy in the middle of the second round. To me, the draft is one big marketplace. It's not just knowing like how good the player is. You have to know what his price is going to be. You know, you wouldn't pay $5 million for a million dollar home. And that's where the best, General managers know the Ballards, the Veaches, the John Schneiders know that they can trade back and get a guy. That's why everyone freaks out. It's not that these guys are terrible players, but you didn't need to take them there. You could have taken them two rounds later and taken right. another guy and still got the player. And then if that guy doesn't become good, you're kicking yourself. And it's happened to them now countless times. The guys they pass on because of the guy they have to have, because of course, John, I got to have this guy. And then two years later, when he can't play, he's freaking out and firing people.